Welcome to Spy Satellites, a podcast about Dune, Imperium, and the people who play it. I'm your host, CJ, and this is Rotation 11, and we're talking about card combos in Dune Imperium Uprising. So join us, why don't you, for a roundtable discussion focusing on cards, combos, atomics, and everything spice. If you like what we do, please give us a like and subscribe, and if you'd like to support us, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash hiddenassets. Supporting us helps to us, as, us continue to produce quality content and gives you access to some pretty awesome perks, including voting for the upcoming podcast topic. So tell your friends and let us know how we're doing. We're always trying to improve the quality of our content, and we can't do it without you, the listener. Tonight, I'm joined by the duo from Consoles a YouTube channel focused on Dune Imperium Uprising content and strategy. The link to their channel will be below in the description. So let me introduce you to Dino. Dinosaur11, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. And also with us is Che Guevara, or used to be known as Airman, or sometimes is known as Airman. What do you go by now? I, I, I'll go by Che for now, but yeah, I'm Airman on TTS. Well, I got to say, guys, it was a blast playing games with you at the North Carolina Invitational. I had such a good time. I hope it was a memorable experience for both of you. And um, it's also great to have you on the podcast, finally. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you, you for having us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a pleasure playing Gale Force Dune, especially you know, <laughs> at the, at the Car- uh, North Carolina Invitational. That was a ride. Oh, yeah, man. It's always great to teach people the game. I guess you guys knew the game, right? So it wasn't so bad yeah, so yeah. getting into it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was yeah. definitely a memorable experience. But mm-hmm. tonight we're not talking about Gale Force 9, uh, although I would love to do that. Today we're talking about card combos in Uprising. So uh, Uprising and, and basically any of the Dune Imperium games with the expansions, they, they don't have a ton of combos, right? They're kind of written um, on the surface of the cards themselves, basically like Fremen Bond, or some synergy with Bene Gesserit, right? But we're talking about com- combos and how you want to go about building your deck um, and some of the cards you want to focus on before you start going into like a tribal um, effect or, or sort of before you go into the, the Fremen Bond, like what do you want to start aiming for when you pick up cards, right? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, you even, you, and I, I think it's great to talk about it in a more macro perspective and thinking overall when, you, when you're going into the game because it's so hard to think like straightforward just like well am i going to go for this 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 off the bat so yeah well let's uh let's start it off i think maybe the best place to start is with um let's start with the fremen the fremen are uh obviously we already mentioned fremen bond so a lot of things regarding their strategy has to do or their deck building has to do with finding the cards that synergize best together and um i'll kick it out to you guys first like uh, what do you what do you think is like the bread and butter like Fremen card that you want to like you want to grab off the row in order to lean into a Fremen strategy or a Fremen deck I think I think hands down the best Fremen card or at least the best to like start with some Fremen synergy has to be Stilgar because well first of all Fremen access six coster um could be like an easy cheap buy round one round two buy possibly and the the reveal effect very strong, right? Like because of Stilgar, if you pick it up round one or round two, you're aiming to push for Fremen cards on the de- on on the road, right? Because now it generates two spice slows. Even 100%. even if it's like um, even playing Stilgar on its own for two troops, very strong. But I mean, we can all agree that Fremen, uh, sorry, Stilgar would be like the best, you know, Fre- uh, Fremen card in the deck. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you're right. Let's just go through what the, what Stilgar the Devoted does. He's six cost. He has a Fremen access. He has a blue access and a yellow access. And he gives you two two troops on uh, his agent ability, which is quite good. And then he kind of has the Liet Kynes ab- ability from base game Dune Imperium. Uh, that's two persuasion for each Fremen card you have in play, including this one when you reveal him. So yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. He is by, by himself a very strong card. He's a combat-focused card, gives you access, can buy Spice Mist Flows. Where do we go from there, guys? Yeah, I think actually uh, a much, uh, I don't want to say realistic, but also like m- more like approachable cards you can think about are Mala Pistol or uh, especially a uh, Northern Watermaster. Cards mm-hmm. that like, 
even on play, you, you don't necessarily feel too bad about playing them. And you don't feel too bad about buying them either. But they also can create some like imbalance in your deck, right? Like uh, for me as a player who centers around like Spice Most Flow builds, and naturally buying cards that reveal for one persuasion is kind of iffy to me, which is why I would prefer to buy cards that like give me uh, a card draw on play or give me a water on play. So it's like, it's those cards that you can buy like round one, round two, that like, you know, like, oh, I'm stuck with three persuasion, I'm stuck with four persuasion, where it's like not enough persuasion to break through into those really good cards, but it's also like not too low. So like, like, you know, what's that one card that I want to buy? And it's like the drawing for me or like just the, the water with them. Yeah, yeah I, I think a Mala Pistol, probably one of the, I think it's honestly one of the most core Fremen cards in the game. Um, and the reason I think that is it it's so flexible. It gives you the blue and yellow access, which is great. Um, obviously, yellow sp spaces are great for for contracts if you want to do contracts. Um, blue is just great because you you need can draw extra cards at Arakeen, so drawing two cards with this card is great. Um, but it does give you kind of wiggle room to go into combat because it does have it has a dagger on reveal. It doesn't have any like great persuasion or anything like that, but it doesn't have any requirements um, that make you have to have Fremen in order to get value out of it. You know what I mean? So it, it basically, yeah. it stands on its own and it's an easy pickup. It's like, yes, this card will basically can fit into almost any deck, but when it's accompanied by other Fremen cards that have Fremen bonds, such as Northern Watermaster, I'm glad you mentioned that card because I, I really like this card. I think this card is phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. And just like getting passive to Spice, even on reveal with Fremen bond, is a huge deal huge deal yeah. sometimes it can be a really difficult thing to catch up in spice if you miss the three water uh deep desert right and this yeah. kind of lets you cut back into that that queue of highliner and and get in there and, and really go for it so yeah those are really great cards um uh, what else do we have here um i think one of the biggest uh like s easily slept on fremen cards is unswerving loyalty that Ooh. one a one coster, you know, has no access, which is which is I guess bad. But revealing for a troop and have the, having the ability to place that troop in on your reveal turn could could catch so many people off guard, especially if you're entering combat and you're like down by two swords or something, right? There's so many situations where unswerving loyalty with that fremen bond could be so strong. So if you're even if you're just like holding a mala pistol and you've played the mala pistol and you draw into this, I think I mean this has the combat ability, right? One persuasion, you know, debatable, but that troop, because in Uprising, we've established that, you know, combat is very strong, right? Winning combats practically wins you games, right? Round seven, round eight, winning those is key. So this card lets you put in troops, but also regenerates those, like it regenerates the troops that you've put in. So you have some sort of garrison, at least every round. Mm -hmm. So I think picking up this card, regardless of if you, if you, um, have a Fremen or not, I think this card is strong, even if you don't have a Persuasion for like a high cost card. Yeah, okay, uh, I, I see that, but also, like, uh, I'm gonna, I, I get that you're you, you stranded around combat a lot, but I'm also gonna say, like, what's your what's your thoughts on buying this card, like, a uh, round one or round two? Like, are, are you in favor of that or not? I think if you buy this card round one, round two, you're only buying it because you don't have Persuasion to buy another card, right? Like, I think I definitely would pick this card over like a Prepare the Way if I'm sitting on like three Persuasion. And there's no decent card on the row, right? Um, also, once I have bought this card, you have to realize that since this has no access, you're probably gonna have to end up trashing one of your convincings or like a or some sort of like or you'd have to replace yeah. one of your convincings with like a prepare the way or some some mm -hmm. format of get rid of convincings because you don't want to be stuck in a hand where you have double convincings, double dune, and this. Yeah. So you'd have yeah. to, you know, get rid of one of your non access cards so that at least yeah. you can play this in your hand. So it works best if you have ways to trash cards out of your deck or you're just trashing aggressively at uh, Desert desert Power. No, what is it called? Desert, desert Survival. Tactics. Desert, desert, desert Tactics. Desert, desert Tactics, tactics desert excuse tactics. me. Yeah. And uh, Or if you have cards like Mala Pistol that'll draw through your deck faster. Or if you're just Muad'Dib who has a really good ring that can help you find those cards faster. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that definitely works. If you're playing someone who's more passive at... Like if you're playing the Emperor, you might not want this card in your deck yeah. I, i've not played a, yeah, a fremen agree. tribal deck much with him though I, I have done it a couple occasionally 
but it's usually not with this card. Um, though I don't know why that is. Like maybe maybe it's fine, and I just kind of like I mean, chicken out, thinking like I'd end up in one of those situations where I don't have a playable card. You know? Yeah, I mean with with, with Shadam, I'm like his his ring is like an S tier card on its own to the point where like yeah, oh wow, well, yeah. There's it, it, it's, it takes a lot more for me to buy those, those kind of cards and dilute my deck like that. That's sure. true. It does kind of fit that same like like mold, right? It's it's meant yeah. to do the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you all yeah. think about some of the six costers like Desert Power, the Promo Arrakis Revolt? Um, like, are those cards? Do you think like are they com comparable to Stilgar? Are they kind of like, you know, can you just build around? Do you have to build around them, or are they just good on their own? I think a good argument to be made is if you're sitting on six persuasion. Are you buying Stogar or are you buying Rackets from Old? Hmm. Right? Because having those three swords on reveal, very strong, obviously, because combats are so important. But so is Stogar, right? Stogar has those two troops. Um, I think I think we can all agree that we're probably picking Stogar over Desert Power. But like I think Stogar versus Arrakis from Old is like a de is definitely like a good debate to be talked about. Because it yeah. gives you a troop on uh, on buy. Problem is it only has blue access, but really when you're when you're getting a worm on a non-worm spot, very good, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I I mean, for for me, like when I'm, I guess this is it's kind of personal to me, but when I'm playing, it just feels so committal to have to buy those cards, uh, which mm -hmm. which I, I I hate like about that about myself sometimes when I feel like I'm gonna, like affects me in certain ways when I'm buying cards or not, or even when I feel like I have to buy that card sometimes when it comes on the road, even though it might not be the best for me. Yeah. So it's like it's it's a weird situation for me when I'll say like, but yeah, I, I think in a vacuum, of course, they're strong because worms are strong. Yeah. Worms are strong. I mean, Rackus Revolt being able to blow the wall with a card is kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's insane. Um, but also, which, also, which also means it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's the only card I think that lets you do that. Right, the only mm -hmm. like agent yep. effect that lets you do yep. that. And there's no reveals that let you blow the wall. My, if I'm correct. Yeah. That's um, right. yeah. So, I mean, it is, it is a little spicy. <laughs> spicy. It's a little bit expensive with two spice as its cost, and you have to have hooks, of course. So it's not, it's not impossible that you'd buy this and then get in a situation where you don't have hooks or don't have the spice to pay for it. But most of the time, I mean, you're, you're going to be playing this round seven, hoping to get a worm into combat when you've been locked out of it and hopefully win the game that way. But this card, I think it stands on its own, kind of like Stilgar. They're very similar to me. Mm -hmm in their roles they're both combat cards if you get both of them like geez man oh, i mean okay, that's yeah. you're in good i think you're, that's just gg's at that point right? <laughs> that's like the perfect scenario like of every scenario yeah would like, you build uh, yeah. around arrakis revolt though or would you just like just pick it up and move on to some other strategy i don't think it's i don't think you can build around arrakis Revolt. like it's not a card that's meant to be built around other than by like simply no. trashing your deck so you see this card every round but like Wait, i think you can play a sword it deck right I mean, I guess sword deck, but like, even if you're playing a spice of slow deck and you see this card and you're just like, oh, I'm going to go in one heavy on one combat one and I'm combat. just going to battle, like ram this card in, put a worm in and win that combat, right? Because that's what, that's what most spice of slow players do, right? They, you know, just sit around for a while, uh, you know, sit around by spice of slows and then are like one combat. This is my combat. It matches for me. Call it a day. And then I'm going to go back to spice of slows. So this card works with good in any deck. Like if you see this, I think it's a definitely pick up. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's also two sided though, right? Because you, well, once you load the wall, you're pulling it up for everybody. So, it, I mean, they're also giving up the potential for other people to put in their worms too and spiral as well. Which is why, like, there's also just a strong argument to be made just to reveal it for like a strong portion of the game. When yeah, you see it. No, I agree. That's that's how I usually do it as well. I don't yeah. usually play it to to blow the wall. Its play effect yeah. is kind of one time in my view. Yeah, you honestly, just I do agree. this once. Yeah. Um, and also it's not very good. It's like only got blue access. Yeah. So yeah. that's actually an argument for Stilgar just being a better base card to, to play up, play yeah. around or build around. Obviously it is meant to be built around. Whereas this one just kind of stands on its own, does some good mm -hmm. stuff and probably will win you the game if you can, you know, manage to get a worm in there and double the combat rewards. But yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. Um, another card that comes to my mind that is similar to those two cards, the Desert Power and, and Arrakis Revolt. Uh, is leadership now leadership has a fremen access it costs five it has fremen access and a yellow and it says in its agent box for each sandworm you have in the conflict draw a card 
And then it has uh, two persuasion, which is not bad, and one dagger, and it gives you a dagger for every other revealed card that provides one or more daggers. So it's basically like Bashar from uh, yeah. Xmo, right? Uh, yeah, for me personally, it's that that two persuasion reveal that just like it, it, it'll never be a bad buy for me. Mm -hmm. I guess if that makes sense. But I also find that a lot of times with how I play personally. I'm getting only one dagger out of it, which is kind of sad, but it's just, it's my, it's my, it's my tunnel vision at times when I feel like I have to just trash my daggers early game, every single game. And yeah. so I, I think, I think Dino has a different perspective than me because he, he tends to keep his daggers more. So actually, I'll, yeah. Well, if you look um, at all these cards, hold on, before you, before we move on, if you look at these cards and I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah, uh, leadership, leadership requires daggers. There aren't that many Fremen cards that provide daggers that you really want to pick up that, no, that yeah, are like no, you know yeah. to, to build your deck out like sure if you get like long live the fighters or rackets revolt you're getting extra sh swords or even shashakli or something like that but still guard doesn't like maker keeper doesn't desert power doesn't like ecological testing station doesn't fidekin still tent doesn't mm -hmm. northern Watermaster doesn't you know what i'm saying like these cards that in my view are more of a core fremen strategy tend to tend to not work with this card and so i see people playing this one with like by itself with like a bunch of like emperor cards or uh spacing guild cards like maybe the double agent or things like that because they're more flexible um you know what i mean and obviously yeah. we don't need to really li li uh, belabor this but it is more or less um a paul card or a, a more deep card right <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. you want you want to draw cards I mean, it's good for anybody, but it's like a Paul card. You draw, you get worms in the conflict. You draw some cards. You get intrigues. So like you are profiting. You're gonna crush with leadership. So anyway, yeah. continue. I think my argument to be made was with leadership is that if you pick it up round one or round two before you've trashed like both of your daggers, I think you should keep both your daggers, right? And like I think, I think leadership is one of those cards that you can definitely build a deck around. Like especially if okay. you pick up like some Sardar card, like some Emperor cards that have like you know swords on them shishakli as we said you know even desert power or like that allows you to trash your non-dagger cards and desert the fact survival. that desert sorry, no sorry yeah desert survival yeah desert survival the one. fact that it has a dagger as well that turns into two daggers and if you if you keep your deck uh, like rotated well so it's like you have your your leadership with like all your all your dagger cards and then your next cycle is like your faction accesses so that you're playing like so one one turn you're playing like your factions and you're, you're trying to go max points and the other turn you're entering combat. I think like that's definitely like a valid strategy to play around. Like I think in one of the other previous uh, spy satellites, I think you brought up that um, was it meme to play like you know artillery cas or like right. like that. I think I think I mean like I'm gonna say artillery cas is obviously like a valid strategy. But si yeah. um, similarly here, like playing leadership with like daggers, I think. I think it's a very good strategy, at least in Uprising, when yeah, combat is so much more heavy. I agree, especially since just that one combat is all you need. You don't need to, like, do this multiple times. You just need to set it up once, right? Awesome. And if, if you have the card and you're like, all right, I'll just go Arakeen, I'll hit up, you know, I'll, I'll just draw some cards at um, Research Station, and then, you know, I'll hit some other daggers, I'll go into combat, maybe I'll throw a worm in, like you're very likely to take people off guard with this and, and you have to you make people play a little bit more cagey and throw cards in that or throw troops in they probably shouldn't so that's nice yeah so i agree with that i agree with that i think this card does synergize well with well De desert survival my, my my big problem with desert survival is that you really want to play this card you don't really want to hold it um especially if it's going to be yeah. your dune card like if you're going to take dune out of your deck and replace it with desert survival you want to get the value out of it otherwise it's just like a worse like idea like you're, you're you're like you're turning it into a dagger <laughs> you know what i mean like no yeah, um, yeah. so i i, I kind of think that it, it's anti-synergistic in some ways with desert survival because of the on play effect being so strong maybe it's much better with shashakli who gives you two daggers and has a fremen bond it's like the fremen bond uh fremen uh bump is very strong so like that thing that works really good or maybe just the long live like if you can pick up one of the six or sevens with that that's a, that's a big ask though like a five six yeah. and seven you're you're gonna yeah, be winning the game anyway probably like you're gonna win yeah. that combat but it's it's such a hard thing to get like more more than one card that's like six plus in the game i feel yeah um but anyway i mean i'm, I'm bad at buying cards I, I, think, I generally get one good one i was gonna say like i think one of the arguments we made for um leadership is the fact that it has fremen access 
So like mm-hmm. even if you you know miss your rotation, right? You can still go frame kit or like desert tactics or like probably frame kit, right? And like yeah. if you're sitting with your like another diplo in your hand, like now you can send your diplo to a non frame space if you haven't gotten the friendship already. So I think I think that like that boosts its value simply because it has that frame access as well. Yeah, yeah definitely, uh, definitely. I see from like a mental perspective, like when you buy leadership, like 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 in your mind, do you think that like I have to keep daggers because for me, when that happens to me, it's like, also part of me thinks like, am I gonna give up a spice sword for like the rest of this game, or like, mm-hmm. like it's 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 that like especially early game like like do I commit to giving up a spice sword flow for the rest of the game, pretty much like off the bat, and saying That's like point. I'm I'm only gonna go into combats, which I mean it's so viable, but it's like, for me and I, and I know for a lot of others too, it's like, a principled play tells you that like, oh you know. Buy or prepare the ways, like uh, get get your persuasion to buy your spice and slows. When it's like, when there's also the, the fully other argument that just like, max your deck out in a, in a way that fits like your your goal for the game. Mm-hmm. Which it's like, which I don't think is. I think we're kind of talking about deck building in that yeah. way. I mean, like obviously yeah. this is not the best way to be building your deck all the time. You definitely need to be picking up prepare the ways. You need you need to be pivoting and getting cards that are good for you. Um. But at the same time, if you find yourself in a situation where you see a core card like mm-hmm. a Stilgar or even I think a Maker Keeper might be a better core card for Fremen to just build around because it itself is just phenomenal. Yeah. And the value of it is so strong, so high that then you can just pick up Fremen and profit from it. Same thing with um, Southern Elders, which is a very open, flexible card that gives you both Fremen Bond access. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it gives you Fremen access, Benny Jessard access. It has synergy with Bene Gesserit and as synergy with Fremen. So like I like that. I think that card might be one of my favorite, like I want to build the tribal deck, but I'm not sure which way to go cards. Yeah, it's um good. it's a really good card, yeah. And also I like the persuasion being four persuasion, it's like it's it's like the perfect amount where it's like you're so happy when you're on four persuasion and that card comes out like Yeah. Like like it's great. Four is easy. I, mean, I think it's five like is water reveal as well, right? Yeah, water yeah, I mean, reveal. Yeah, like like do you guys like prefer? Like I mean, I almost like say like, like if for me it's like, it, like if I'm seeing like Northern Watermaster or Molipist, or like I, I for me it's almost like instantaneous that I take the water card over like a dagger card or a drawing card. But I don't know yeah. about you guys. No, it is for yeah. me too. Yeah, hundred percent. If I can if I can generate resources either on action or passively by revealing, I will take the card that does that. 100% of the time. I still think, yeah, Northern Watermaster, really, really strong card. Yeah. I mean, um, just it does everything. It gets you spice, gets you water. Um, you know, if you can't play it, you just hope you get another Fremen card. I mean, then you pick up Unswerving Loyalty, you get two spice Honestly, and you throw yeah. in a troop. It's like, what value, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so that, yeah, that's that's one of my uh, favorite Fremen cards that um, builds around. I th- definitely think like, you know, things like Mala Pistol are good core cards, especially if you're drawing a lot. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, anyway. So we're we're kind of sh- swerving a little bit into Bene Gesserit territory. Um, what, can you guys identify? Tell me about what you think, or if we're going to be doing BG ter- like tribal, or you know, cards that re- require having other Bene Gesserit cards in play. And there are quite a few of them in this game. Like, which cards would you be picking up, and why? Oh, I think I should... first of all to just say like I think Bene Gesserit synergy is probably like the weakest of all four synergies yeah. uh, in the game. But like, if I were to, you know, build like a Bene Gesserit deck, I think one of the easiest pickups is probably like Southern Elders, right? Um, yeah, yeah. As the two buy, uh, sorry, the two troops on Synergy. Um, another one is probably like in high places, right? I mean, that's obviously like a high demand card, right? But if you're sit- if you're with it and you don't have the two spies, playing that card for another spy, as long as you have the Bene Gesserit Synergy, right? If you have another Prepare the Way and then you play this card, um... I like the value is pretty good there. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it gives you access, so you can do a two like uh, espionage, get two spies, draw two cards. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean, like, are there many other like Bene Gesserit, like synergized cards in here? Like, I there's mean, no there's like tread, tread and darkness, which is a four cost. It has green, blue, and yellow, and its agent abilities. If you have another Bene Gesserit card and play, trash a card and draw a card. I, I find this card like interesting, but never great. Like, I think yeah, it's fine. It's... Um, I, th- I think if it had Bene Gesserit access, it'd be like amazing. Oh, yeah. But but like it just the lack of faction access in that card just makes it so unappealing to me. 
I agree. Um, and since most of the time you're going to be picking up like a, a prepare the way instead of, you would yeah. probably pick up a prepare the way anyway. It's mostly the same card, but you don't have to spend the extra persuasion. You get two prepare the ways instead of one tread in darkness. Um, I've seen people like get value with tread in darkness, like actually getting two tread in darkness and go tread in darkness into tread in darkness, <laughs> which seems kind of like a waste of your time because, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're not getting one access. You don't have Fremen access or Bene Gesserit access or Emperor access or anything like that. So you're just benefiting from like a late game ability because you need to have all this stuff align in your hand. So it's probably going to happen like round five, six, or seven. So it's late, in, mm -hmm. in my view, view, it's like a late game kind of effect. Um, but you're doing it in a, in a with a card that like you're probably going to be better off just revealing it for two persuasion anyway like what are yeah. you exactly doing with this you're trashing a card out of your deck and you're drawing a card that's going to get you maybe one maybe two persuasion so it kind of replaces itself ah, it's just such a weird yeah. card to yeah. me. It, it feels so bad because like you know, i think most of like the bad desert synergies like center around like trying to get you spice and slows which is yeah. like you're, you're playing the two persuasion card to like what draw another one it's like Right. It feels almost like like a, like a net zero. Right. Yeah, so I think I, that in general, these cards fit best into a different strategy, which is a Spice Must Flow strategy that encom encompasses mm -hmm. all the, a bunch of other uh, factions and a bunch of other cards and just mostly the two costers, right? Things like yeah. Sardaukar Coordination, right? Which is a two mm -hmm. persuasion card, but has, mm -hmm. is very flexible um, and gives you extra swords. It's kind of like a card that almost does everything. It's got... It's got like access, deploys troops from mm -hmm. random places that usually can't deploy <laughs> deploy troops from, and yeah, you can buy yeah. spice must flows help you with that. So that card's very very strong and kind of works with these. Um, if you're just buying spice must flow, but I don't know if I'd, I if it, if tread shows up in the in the row, and <laughs> let's say it's, let's say there's it's tread for most of the game. Yeah, it's it's yeah it is it is, and so I think that's very interesting to say like some of these cards that are BG cards that seem to be, um, like combo cards they're really not they yeah. they really don't feel like combo or at least at this point you know maybe when we get like an expansion or if you're use, doing like a homebrew which has a bunch of different effects it could be much better yeah. but i think in this case it's just a wasted kind of two persuasion dagger like most of the time and you'd be better off either just getting like a prepare the way and something else like i don't know like yeah well, if, it's, if, it's funny because like an x and ammo like the, the any synergy was insane right was like insane. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I, I, I actually have a question to you guys. Have you guys ever used a, a weirding woman? Like, I don't think yes. I've ever gotten it. Um, <laughs> it's I've I've picked up the weirding woman. It was like it was a very niche scenario. It's like <laughs> when you're sitting on like um what's it called like eight persuasion and you're Erlon, you pick up a ring. So it's like your first <laughs> action you play like prepare the way and then you go like and then you play your ring and then you play to buy like a weirding woman and then now you're sitting on nine persuasion. So that now you can play your weirding woman to a non, like to a non draw space, and then recall the weirding woman because you have a prepare the way. It's yeah, so yeah. niche. It's actually unreal. Like I think that's the only usable scenario for like weirding woman. I'm not saying like you know the so like if you're Irulan, I guess you can completely start from you know start from scratch. You can just trash out like recon, trash out dunes, and then just sit with like two weirding women's in your hand because you know they could reveal and they have the access. That's yeah, fair. that's, that's like, okay. I guess, <laughs> but the, the I mean, thing is, like, yeah. usually there's better things to be doing with your time. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, so... it's it's like very. I think it, you, you said it. I mean, that's not really a combo card so much as in a, a card you grab if you're Irulan and you need to have the specific opportunity to use it and bounce it back to your yeah. hand to get a spice must flow. Because what else are you doing with it, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just I find it so awkward. I, I wish it said just return this card from play to your hand after you play. It. Like, what if you just yeah, you could keep yeah. playing it? That'd be cool. Like That'd be broken. But, what? No, I don't, I don't know if it'd be broken. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be broken. <laughs> it'd be pretty persuasion. strong. It'd be pretty, pretty, pretty good for one persuasion. That's it'd be sure. very good for one persuasion. But <laughs> then again, maybe we only have one in the deck instead of two. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. I'd say like the best Bene Gesserit cards are the ones, and then the ones that create combos, or that join combos, are the ones yeah. that give you uh, spies, really. Yeah. And I think that that kind of leads into, and I, I'm, I'm sorry to like, you know, buy Bene Gesserit, but you really don't have a lot of combos besides Bene Gesserit Operative, which I think is, and you what might agree with me, one, yeah. one of the best cards in the game. Yeah, and the thing with Bene Gesserit sure. Operative is that she doesn't, she plays into any deck. It doesn't matter if you're play, if you could, you could combat heavy and still play, uh, what's it called, and still have Bene Gesserit Operative because Absolutely. you can spy 
also it has uh, it has access right so that's Avengers good and then having access, that spy yeah. very strong as well yeah mm-hmm. plus it also helps you buy spice miss flows i mean for some reason this yeah. card gets you spies it buys spice miss flows late in the game if you have two or more spies on the board which with this card is not hard <laughs> it's, yeah, it does yeah, the yeah. thing that gets you the reveal effect like it it's very very good um and it's three cost so it's cheaper than branching path or tread no it's the same as branching path but it's uh, yeah branching path than is a good card. yeah branching path is a fine card but it, it's it's fine on its own i think i don't think it has yeah. any sort of synergies with any of these other cards but um tread in darkness you know like just gets laughed in the face <laughs> like, by this other yeah, card. I'm like never I'm never going to buy Shredding Darkness over BGO. Like. Yeah. So so let's uh, let's yeah. highlight some of that. I think like BGO Bene Gesserit operative for me is a core strategy card, a core combo card in this particular yeah. type of combo. And why don't you guys like fill in here like what other cards fit into this combo? Branching pads, I think cuz if you're playing Bene Gesserit operative, right, it only has one access which is Bene Gesserit. So if you pick up branching pets and you're spamming, so you're spamming Benny's Heart Operative and you're spamming branching pets, you're probably going to pick up the Benny Alliance. And yeah. that effect of branching pets when you trash an intrigue, to draw an intrigue, but also gain two spice, I mean, like, insane ability, right? You could get rid of leverage for all you oh, know. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, then, you know, you end up drawing, like, unexpected allies. Who knows? But you also that's get two fair. spice off of it. So I think that's one of, like, the core cards. If you pick up Benny's Heart Operative, like, you should play for this as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely a branching path. You could get the alliance with other cards too. It doesn't necessarily have to be BGO, but like the branching path is the effect is very good if you can get that alliance, right? I mean, that's that's worth playing for for sure. Yeah, um, like but, as you were saying, you know, like what core combos are you playing for Benedict for an operative? So it's like if you're playing BGO, you might as well pick this up. Well, what's the best card you can be get? The... What's the best card you can, you get BGO? What's the best card that you can get next? <laughs> In high places, for in sure. In high places, yeah. In high places, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In high places, yeah. which, uh, yeah, obviously helps you buy Spice Miss Flows easily. Easily. Mm-hmm. Gives you a spy on its on, on purchase, so it's a five-coster. This card's one of my favorite cards in the game as well. Like, I think that the yeah. just the, the mood of the image on it with the Emperor is back to you, and then uh, Irulan and um, uh, Margot Fenring. I think that's... I think it's Irulan. Is that Margo? Or Actually, that... I don't know who that is. Mother Mohaim. Oh, maybe it's Mother Mohaim. It was Irulan and and, um, and Mother Mohaim. It's hard to tell because this wasn't mm-hmm. in the movie. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what, what scene that's from, but it's it's pretty cool, cool image. Um, but uh, that, and then I'm looking for Public Spectacle. I mean, oh, yeah. arguably one of the best cards in the game, right? Mm-hmm. It's a four-coster Emperor card, not a BG card, Emperor card, but has a spy icon and if you recall the spy this turn get a a wild bump and it has one persuasion for reveal and it reveals for a spy so i mean the bgo gets you the spies the the public spectacle gets you the extra bumps rinse repeat like this is just i mean it's it's a combo that's so obvious (laughs) like it's just like this this is it's just good stuff Always, if you can find BGO and pick up Public Spectacle, you're you're in the driver's seat. You're going to be racing up those tracks. There might not be anything people can do to yeah. chase you down. Like, that's it's hard yeah. to do. I mean, I think Public Spectacle is good on its own, even without BGO, because of the fact I mean, that yeah. Public Spectacle reveals for a spy. I mean, mm-hmm. it feeds itself, yeah, right? I mean, that's yeah. a like, very strong ability. But, oh, yeah. but with that being said, I think with BGO, Calculus of Power is one of those, like, I, I wouldn't say hidden gem, because it's like, I mean, people agree that it's really good, but like, just like, the, with with BGO, just like the amount of how much it like it propels your game forward with trashing, with going to other faction spots, with the spies you get from BGO, and because it reveals for two persuasion, like it, it's mm-hmm. it, it's like a triple whammy of like goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at the center of this uh, spy strategy, if or, or spy synergy decks is Bene Gesserit operative. It, it, oh, it yeah. spreads out into everything, right? It spreads yeah. out into the Fremen, right? Where we can get the Rebel Supplier, which is uh, on paper, like kind of a, a card that you might not want to buy because it doesn't have any persuasion. It does reveal mm-hmm. for Spice though, which is awesome. Um, but it says, if you yeah. recall the Spy this turn, you get two troops, which by the way, is like a Stilgar. <laughs> like that is yeah. Stilgar's yeah. effect. Yeah. But and the there's fact a that it has cost. the ability to draw a card too, right? Because you're getting yep. a spy back. Yep, you're really either strong. infiltrate or you draw a card. So it's it's doing slightly more. Uh, or you kind of have to set it up to do more. But that's still 
Uh, it's easier to pick mm -hmm. up a rebel supplier as there are two in the deck and only one Stilgar. But yeah, mm -hmm. so we have that synergy. We have the Bene Gesserit operative. We have public spectacle rebel supplier synergy. We have strike um, fleet, which is one of the most like, oh. insane cards. <laughs> Will win you games if you buy it early kind of cards. Um, and the fact five, that it's five persuasion is two is insane, right? Five persuasion yeah. gives you a spy. And and yeah, so it basically like, powers itself once. I'm, I'm looking at Spider-Man. I'm also seeing a dangerous uh, rhetoric as well, which I mean, it's one of those cards that you got to buy if you see it. Dangerous rhetoric. Tell us about it. I mean, just okay. P people say okay, okay, it trashes, but it gives you the potential to get a double bump in a faction, which um, in Uprising. I mean, first of all, the, the card itself is like it, it goes to a green, a lands red spot or a spy spot, and it gives you a uh, faction bump on play and it trashes itself on play so i mean yeah um off it's the a, bat it's like a power play it's like yeah, a power yeah, play yeah which is insane in uprising right because like other than other than a public spectacle there's like it's kind of in like a i guess oh, overthrow if you have overthrow it's kind of hard to get these double bumps in it is so I mean, we can't really talk about the spy strategy without talking about guild spy, right? I mean, uh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's yeah. I think I think that's that's like a gem that we yeah, haven't talked about yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's like, <laughs> I mean, the the spacing synergy in this deck is just like, all right, like let's. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's like the, uh, operative, right? If you get vengeance operative in like round one, or like you know, and then you play it round two, round three, and then now you have two spies, one on espionage and one on like uh, spacing. Mm, like now you're yeah. just sitting on like what two spies and the fact that this benedict operative allows you to you know uh get three persuasion and then along with guild spy if you had that that's five persuasion on its own yeah. like you go high council that's seven and now you're just if you can just keep printing spice slows you're also getting faction bumps i mean right uh yeah. guild, guild spy one of like the best cards in the game for spice yeah. energy Loki shameless plug but like in in, in a, a dinosaur posted a, a video where he got a round six win with the with, with guilt guilt spy. spy yeah i did watch oh, that's video. true yeah it was, it was a jessica too which <laughs> it, is like yeah that. it's just yeah. like i mean that that card's like a powerhouse on its own you can't yeah, it's like that was a mad crazy jessica game you yeah. had you had honestly where you like drew four like, cards four? or something with her <laughs> yeah. like flip ability and then you doubled the um the espionage <laughs> effect like holy crap like you were sitting yeah. on your entire deck that round with guilt spy in hand i was like wow that that's how you do it. Yeah, uh, that's how, I mean, that's that's how you play only, Jessica. That's, like, that's, that's the only way to do it. That, the problem with Jessica is that she that's like that's her one trick. It's just like oh, you, you go guild spy, you go espionage, round one, round two, double rewards, call it a day. Now you're sitting on two spies, and nobody can stop you because you're probably never removing those spies. Yep, no, that's wow. great. Very strong. Yeah, yeah, guild spy, very very strong card um, in the spy strategy. Getting it by itself is still okay, but it itself, I think. It's that's a build around almost card. You really just want to oh, yeah, grab sure. as many yeah, yeah. spy cards as possible um, and go to espionage as soon as possible once you get that. But if mm -hmm. you can, it's gonna be hard for people to chase you up those tracks, man. I mean, yeah, unless I mean, they just the cut you off. The crazy part is like the fact that you get a spy on buy. Like yeah. the pack, yeah. it powers itself on the on the like the second that you buy it. That's yeah. that's actually insane too, and just for three cost. I can't yeah, believe, I mean, honestly, can't believe it's three cost. It gives you a spy for three. Like, is mm -hmm. the only other card that does that that's even remotely close is Spy Network, which has no access. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it yeah. is a good card by itself. I think <laughs> Spy Access, or Spy Network, excuse me, is very good. It's a two coster that has no uh, agent ability and no access, but it, pr it reveals for two. So it replaces your convincing arguments and it has a dagger. And it says if you have two or more spies on the board, you can recall a spy to get. An entry card, so another synergistic card with Bene Gesserit operative, um, and even Guild Spy. But like with Guild Spy, to be able to do this with three, and it'll like move you up tracks fast. Like when you buy Spice Most Flows, that's it's almost like compounding the yeah. the the effects. Like you get a point here, and you're gonna get a point here, and you're gonna get a point here. It's like come on, that's so much. Yeah, um, that's I don't crazy. Think, I don't think the spy network, like, I don't, I don't think the reveal effect is like what you should be highlighting. I think it's the fact that it has two tags. You know, it oh, has that's true. emperor that's true, and true. spacing, right? Like, there's so many spacing cards. Like, obviously, we'll get into spacing soon, but like, there's so many spacing cards that just, you know, are like, oh, discard a card. But if you discard a spacing build card, now you can draw two cards, or like, you yeah. can draw another card, 
or you can draw an intrigue because you know guild spy has that action ability too right like, yeah, so like the action ability is very good, strong yeah. on its own right <laughs> round one or like um, early in the game when you're not pushing for spice of slows the fact that guild spy has you know access and you've picked up another spacing guild card like spy network now you can re now you can discard a uh, sp you can discard that spy network and now you get another intrigue and you get another card i mean 100 percent. this keeps going yeah. right yeah it also is a great uh, outlet for calculus of power because you get your spy yeah. out of it even if you reveal it get an intrigue and then like calculus it trash it get some daggers like that's very strong um, yeah. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Spy Network, the, the reveal is sometimes relevant. Most of the time, it's just a convincing argument with a dagger, which it's fine, but it gives you a, gives you a spy. And those, and those tags are just yeah. very, very synergistic. All right. Well, let's, let's, um, I think, I think obviously, you know, there are a lot of really strong cards that deal with spies. Like Wheels Within Wheels is just a great Emperor Spacing Guild card. Again, another card that has two tags that we need to highlight eventually right but yeah, gives yeah. you a spy <laughs> on reveal and spies on reveal are very powerful very powerful um mm. covert ops which is gives you two spies i think this card's a little bit under appreciated it's very annoying um but it's uh two spies on reveal so it catches you up with the spy game imperial spy master like another very strong payoff card like these are all kind of payoff cards a little bit right yeah. maybe not the wheels within wheels the wheels within wheels um, I think you can just reveal it and be happy. Um, but like Imperial Spymaster, you want to play it and get the intrigue, right? I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, also, even with spacing cards, like uh, the cards that make you discard to draw more space. If you try to discard a spacing card, you draw more. Or like, uh, Actually, all three of us were in a game with Cheesable, if you remember that. Where yeah, I remember that. He, he, he had just that, that, that synergy with the spacing. Yeah. Yeah, let's actually talk about that because that game was kind of eye opening for me and, <laughs> and <laughs> how bad I was at this game at the time. No, like so, but no, but really the the amazing synergy he had as as he was talking about, he got like space time folding. He yeah, like a yeah. Double agent. He had like, did he have guild spy or not? I think he had guild spy. I think he had guild spy, and he had like guild envoy. He had guild envoy for <laughs> yeah, sure. He, 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 yeah, he had guild. Oh. I think yeah, guild envoy, and he had. I think he had space and guild's favor where he was. Discarding yeah, that, I think. Favor. I no, think I don't think it guild spy. I don't think there was guild spy. I, I, I think, think it was I just the other spacing, spacing guild's favor. Yeah. yeah, I think it's yeah. spacing guild's favor. So spacing guild's favor. We're talking about mm -hmm. now this tribal effect of it's kind of tribal of spacing guild, but the effect is to discard cards to draw cards, um, which is very good because drawing new cards, draw, discarding the cards you don't need, and drawing the cards you do uh, makes your hand better, yeah. so you can buy spice miss flows. So um, like cards like spacing guild's favor, which to me is that bread and butter card for this sort of strategy yeah. to get the discard synergies going because it itself is a payoff card. When this card is discarded, get two spice. It also draws you a card for some reason. So it just draws you a card too. <laughs> and then it reveals for two persuasion and this card does everything. And if you yeah. pay three spice, you can get a free wild bump. So mm -hmm. that's insane. Um, it's cost, cost five. It has uh, spacing guild access and yellow access. I mean, if you're going to go for a spacing guild, like this card is just good generally. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to get it for the synergy. Like you can just get it and just benefit from the draw and the access and the sometimes bump, right? Mm -hmm. And the persuasion. It's not a choose either. It's a two persuasion and, which is a little nuts, I think. But if you get that and you get guild envoy, Guild Envoy being basically a better um, version of um, your diplomacy, and it like, makes you discard a card, and if you discard a Spacing Guild card, you draw two, then mm. you're singing, then you're humming. And that's that's what Cheezable did in that game, right? Yeah. Um, and and, and just in that game, he, he got, well, let's admit it, he, he got pretty good draws that, again and again and again. That's you know, true. With, with, with that combo. But yeah, I mean, it was it, it just, yeah, it was so good. It was so, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you're looking for that kind of synergy, spacing guilds favor first, I'd say. Even though I'd say like picking up a guild envoy is fine. Like yeah. I'd probably do it because of the access. It's just a flexible card. Um, and then if you buy a spice must flow, you can discard the spice must flow to draw two cards. Yeah, yeah, that, like, that, that's, a, that's that's like the best feeling I've ever. I think yeah, <laughs> I think that's like one of the best things that you know they've done in, done with uprising is the fact that they've labeled spice must flow as a spacing guild card. Yeah, I think that's like one of the best. You know, yeah, yeah. improvements to the game. 
I agree. because now the spacing guild synergy is so real, right? Yeah, I hundred percent. And also, agree, yes. one of the easy things to pick up early on, I think, is just like space time folding, right? I mean, to yeah, it has the yeah. ability to discard a card to draw a card. Uh, if you get that with spacing guild's favor, obviously now you're sitting with two spice, but you also get double draw. Um, I mean, yeah. I think I think spacing guild's favor, like. I think on its own could be good, but like mm -hmm. definitely very heavy with the spacing ghost synergy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Space time folding is interesting too. There's just one in the deck, and it costs one persuasion. It has guild access, which is kind of insane. Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's like one of the lowest cost cards in the game with access, right? I don't think there's any other card. Yeah, that's I think one it's cost. only one. It's the lowest, yeah, for sure. There's only one in the oh. game, but you know you're going to be wanting to you want to build a spacing guild deck if you get space space time folding yeah though it's just sometimes just good to discard a card to draw a card like that's fine mm -hmm. cycling out a bad card from your hand like oh i've got the stupid dune i hope i draw my convincing to buy a spice must flow mm -hmm. or whatever or my still guard like it's just a good card to cycle through your deck i think that's it might be like a, a first turn pick i'd pick up spice space time folding and anything mm -hmm. else i could find um maybe over some other like very strong single cards honestly I mean, it's a very, very, very strong Erlon card. I think. I mean, yeah. like you pick oh. it up, you know, round one, and now you just go to deliver supplies with it. Because I mean, now you just have it in your hand. It's very strong. Very strong. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking over any non-access card for sure. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. We also have a couple of other interesting cards that work with this discard synergy. There's captured Mentat, which I also think is just by itself a very, yeah. very good card. Uh, it's five costs, gives you green and yellow, and its agent ability is discard a card in order to get an intrigue card and draw a card. That that for me is where this card shines, is just getting the free intrigue card. Um, well, the intrigue on is access. great. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you're going to be cycling through your deck faster. Drawing cards, in my opinion, is one of the strongest things you can do in Uprising because it finds you your combo pieces faster, it finds your, your still gars or your, your um, uh, strike fleets or whatever you need to do. It also has a weird reveal, which I think is a, is sometimes it's a it's a it's a very good reveal, but it's also a little bit goofy sometimes. But it's like one persuasion, yeah. and you can go down with a faction and up with a faction. And I've seen people do this with um, Irulan and um, Margo, and just go up and down with their uh, trigger a level level two on their respective tracks, right? Like the Bene Gesserit track yeah. for Margo and the Emperor track for Irulan, and you just get your bonus effect again. That's fine, but the real benefit of that card is when you can like go down a faction you're losing and go up a faction you can win, like especially late yeah. game. And I've seen that happen a lot, and it's very strong, but um, this card by itself is just good and, and can be a nice build around, just like the Spacing Guild's favorite. Like, and if you get both of these cards, Wow. Oh, I mean, that's yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Like, Captured Mentat, discarding Spacing Guilt's favored, getting an Intrigue, drawing a card. That feels good. <laughs> like, getting yeah. two Spice. Very strong, very strong. So, yeah, I'd say those are probably the best two build arounds, in my view, for this kind of discard synergy stuff, if you were going to go for it. but yeah, um, yeah, I think Dinah would agree with me when I say, like, Intrigues are so, you know, on an average, pretty good in Uprising to the point where, like, like I, like if I if I'm going to like assembly hall, hell yeah, give me two intrigues. Yeah, I'm just like or even or even Mentat itself, right? Now you now you oh, can yeah. see an intrigue, and then if you don't like that intrigue, well, it's like okay, well I'm gonna get rid of it. it, and then yeah. see another intrigue, right? And the fact 100%. that it draws you a card too, so now you're now you've gone to Mentat, you've returned yourself an action, and you've seen two intrigues and two draws. Yeah, I mean, yeah, very powerful, especially on that space. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Captured Mentat probably, like, a, I, I don't know, this is, like, a good question, but would y'all early reveal for Captured Mentat? Is that, like, an early reveal kind of card? Ooh. Is there anything else good in the row? Um, Like, if there's I average guess... cards in the row, then I probably would not. If it's the only card in the row, and everything else is, like, Desert Survival, um, maybe an Imperial Spymaster... Maybe like a Sadakar soldier, maybe I would, but you know there there's a lot of good cards in Uprising. There are a lot of good cards. Mm -hmm. It's it's there's less bad cards in Uprising than in base game and in Expo. That is true. Yeah. So I always feel like there's something good to buy no matter what. But I would buy this card for sure over many other cards. But I don't know if I'd early reveal for it. Um, 
to me it feels like giving up an axe an action in order to profit and maybe get like neutral on actions with it feels a little bit like i don't that doesn't something i want to do um but That's i mean fair. if I, it comes around to me i'd probably i'd probably pick it up for sure what do um, you guys think i can um, see yeah, myself yeah. doing it i can see myself earlier doing for this card Are they really? but okay. I, i'm just wow. like that kind of a guy <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> like let's just send it and see if i can okay i i have a mindset of trying to get lucky which mm. it's i don't know if, i don't know if it's good or bad but i love getting int intrigues and i love playing around intrigues i mean if work. you're like i think i think you're at a good position to win the game if you've seen around like eight or nine intrigues i think if you've seen or like seven to eight intrigues i think is like a good portion of intrigues to see so if you've seen like seven to eight intrigues six of them are guaranteed to be good like it doesn't matter what you like what you pick up yeah. like six of them are pretty much like guaranteed to be good uh, as in yeah. like they could generate you spies or they could you know uh get like buy access or like the you know discarding for like one of the bumps one slurry for yeah, one of the bumps yeah. like six six of them are like guaranteed to be good on like or like that's like the average luck or to say based on like my little like analysis that i did but yeah. um so if you see like if this captured mentat if you're seeing more intrigues i think that just increases your chance to win the game in general, but I don't know if I'll give up an action just to see like one or two more entries. That's also, like a yeah. There's, there's action, some easy situations. Yeah, yeah. Action then do it. I think is much for sure. I would never early reveal without without playing anything. Yeah. Yeah. For this, that's not worth it. Oh yeah, it's definitely not worth two actions. But like uh, the question I mean, is, is it worth one action? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I think I I probably wouldn't, and the reason is that most of the time I'd find something comparable that is just as good, but I'd get my action back. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. That's yeah. true. That, that uh, coming up will come up is... But, but I mean, there could be situations where that doesn't happen. And, you know, maybe yeah. you end up with like a delivery agreement and a priority <laughs> contracts and a w two weirding woman and then that card. And then, hell yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm revealing for it early. Like that's... Yeah. I don't want to... I don't want to go down the double contract route. That's just Holy. a nightmare. Yeah, I, I, I've tried it like so many games and it's like, I'll I'll get it off sometimes, and I'm just like, and I I, I won't even win. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just What's my the whole double game. No, oh, like the, the, the priority contracts where you uh, you double contract with priority contracts into. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, that's only fun. good I can see with like interstellar trade. Like that's the only yeah. good synergy that I can see with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, you get interstellar trade, and then I can see like yeah, priority contracts is pretty good, but interstellar trade by itself i don't know if that's a is that a strategy is that a combo i don't know if it's a combo no it's it like, just it's feels like, like not it's just like gets get contracts and then you reveal this thing like wait yeah. for like nine well paul almost got it to six i think got to six in a video we six did. contracts i think yeah. he got six contracts maybe it was seven but it was, it was pretty high um that was at the the first north carolina invitational and and that was uh like pretty insane to see but I, I've seen some pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff with Interstellar Trade. It's just a very strong card on its own. And so, yeah, obviously, priority contracts, yeah. those are good. But, I mean, the con the question you asked was about captured Mentat and whether I would early reveal for it. And I think most of the time, no. That's just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's I, fair. I get that, yeah. It's so... I mean, but, but with that being said, would you early reveal for... Uh, would you early reveal no actions for uh, Guild Spy? Um, Guild Spy, I I think... It depends on what what leader I'm playing, right? Like yeah, if if yeah. I'm playing if I'm playing like a Paul, if I'm playing Paul or like um sorry, Muadib or like Gurney or something, I don't think I don't think I pick up Guilt's Fire like round one without get with like without getting an action, right? Because yeah. their rings are kind of good. So it's like I think I think the only leaders that are pick up like Guild Spy without an action is probably like Fade and Jessica. I think those are like the mm. only two leaders that I can think of. Um That's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. Let, let me let me see. Like, what other leaders could possibly be? I think for Jessica for sure, because you can almost guarantee that you're going to be getting, like, you'll you'll be able to see it the turn you need it. Whereas, yeah. like, I I think for Fade, um, I guess I could see that because you're just going to be getting a lot of spies anyway. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know. Like, giving up two actions, man. Yeah, that's, that 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 that's that, rough. It, that that makes you, me think so hard. You find like, you find yourself so far behind sometimes, and yeah. I, I don't know if guilt spy will entirely catch you up. Like it depends on maybe if you're second position, and you do it, then your first yeah. position, your first to act next action, but then you don't have any spice to go to hit um, um, espionage, espionage, and and then you feel bad. You know what I mean? Like 
Ah, oh, that's a tough one. I think maybe definitely like I would, I would uh, second action reveal for it if I'm first position, hundred oh, yeah, percent yeah. of the time. Like I think that card is just nuts. But you force people into situations where they have to, or you're going to do it, and then, then they're kind of behind. Like and and if they get like if they're fourth position picking up rebels, uh, not rebel guild spy, then like you don't feel too bad because you're probably going to yeah. outpace them anyway. And you know other people kind of overcorrect sometimes against that card um yeah you know what i mean so i mean it, it can it can definitely be good and bad i think it definitely depends i think it depends i don't i don't uh, know. one of the leaders that i mentioned to like i left out was staban i think staban is definitely like a oh yeah i think if you're staban you double like i'm finally giving up two actions for guild spy i yeah, think morphling get... would agree with this i, I think he'd agree would with it sure. I, I think I, I don't know maybe he definitely do it second action but i don't know if he'd open reveal for mm -hmm. it but like i can i think i've seen i've seen people open reveal for guild spy with Stabon and I think done, done very well, but I think it depends on what else is in the row too. Like if you can, if you have like six persuasion and you're picking yeah. up guilt spy and something else like decent, like maybe you're picking up like a double agent, maybe then, or, or like a guild a envoy or guild oh. envoy. Oh, yeah. That, good, that yeah. feels good. But if you're picking up just that, then your next mm -hmm. buy is going to be good, but your hand is going to be bad. Like you're going to have, you know what I mean? Like if you have three persuasion and then you have your ring Esteban, oh, yeah, that yeah. feels bad because you your ring is so good, Esteban. You don't want to you don't want to miss playing your ring. That's true. Um, so I don't know. I think he probably he might say like maybe if you don't have your ring. That that's what yeah. I guess that Morphling would say. Morphling is our resident like master of um of Stabon, Stabon. By the way. Yeah, he's like he's the Stabon master. Um, definitely the best Stabon player I've ever ever played against. So, yeah. um, all right, all right. Yeah. So so we've got that synergy. We're covering a lot of ground here. Honestly, there's so many things to talk about. Yeah. um let's let's briefly cover and we're at we're at about an hour now we're at 56 minutes so let's uh mm -hmm. let's cover the uh calculus of power combos and the the emperor combos that, that we kind of have it we've kind of briefly touched on as the as parts of other combos but yeah. how do they sort of fit if they're your first pickups what cards do you pick up in emperor that are going to help like speak to an overall strategy of combo cards um, hands down, Sardaukar coordination. I mean, I think that's a that's the obvious one, right? I mean, it just builds around Emperor synergy in the reveal. Um, you know, it has two persuasion on reveal. Very, very good for spice and slows, but also has like a, you know, like oh swords. You know, you get a couple of uh, Emperor cards going. Now you're sitting on like two or three, like three or four swords. Plus, yeah. you've got a spice and slow, and you, you you can catch other people off guard if you have enough Emperor cards in your deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I actually just love how, like, with the Emperor cards in Uprising, a lot of it is centered around, like, reveal effects, which is, it just feels so much easier and better to do. Like, it's, like, like, like from, from, like, a mental perspective, when I'm playing the game and I'm buying, like, like a, um, say, a Sarkar Soldier with, with the uh, Imperial Calculus. Spy Master or Calculus, like, it just, it feels so much better to me, like, knowing that, like, I don't have to actively think about, like, Oh, I'm on my last action. What happens if I draw into like, like, like an emperor card? When no, it's like it's on reveal for most of the time. It's like yep. it's like a huge weight off my shoulder when I'm when I'm playing around this synergy. But I, I just love it. I mean, one of the emperor cards that we have to highlight is Corn City, right? I mean, it has no like reveal. I mean, it has no like persuasion on reveal. But I mean, five Solari on you know reveal, um, plus like a it feeds itself. I mean, like you can get Swordmaster with this card, or you can you know go to like dutiful service get a faction bump and also get like a point for discarding two cards yeah. so i mean with, with that card, there's a discard it. synergy but you know yeah. the emperor well, synergy I, could possibly play here that's true i've never seen that happen i've never seen that happen i almost like don't see it as emperor i see half the time when i play it it's, it's, a, it's like almost it's so standalone it's like if i'm buying that card it's either i'm making my game around it or it's just like give me that persuasion right now kind of or give, give me this lawyer like like mm -hmm. right now that's fair. So, that's fair. I, yeah, I can see that argument too. Yeah. So I guess the obvious combo with Corinth City is another card that's very strong. Price of no, is no object. It's kind of like yeah. almost. Yeah. They do similar things, <laughs> right? Price is no object um, might be up there with my top three cards in the game. Um, yeah. I think it's very, very, very strong. It has a, um, six cost when you buy it. It gives you two persuasion. It's Emperor Bene Gesserit card. It has Emperor and Bene Gesserit access, and its agent ability says you may acquire a card to your hand using Solari instead of Persuasion. 
So it essentially is a way, it's kind of like the um, Tleilaxu Master of on play effect from Immortality, but yeah. you have to buy the card. So most of the time, people buy Spice Must Flows with this, right? I mean, that's it's turned nine bucks into a point, <laughs> which yeah. is crazy. And you can do it while going to faction accesses and getting points, right? So you're kind of yeah. getting half a point, getting a point by playing it. So it feeds itself in that way. And also the reveal is to persuasion. So it helps you buy Spice Must Flows if you can't do it that other way. And it gives you two Solari. So I mean, I think one of the, like the useful scenarios for Price is No Object is like use, you, you know, it's like round three and you're sitting on like, you know, like six or seven Solari because you've gone Spice Refinery or, you know, around two. And now you put like Long Live the Fighters or like Interstellar Trade into your hand with like, yeah. uh, with Price is No Object. And now you just have like a, like a S tier card or like even overthrow, right? Like you go round one, like action one, you go like espionage, you know, get a spy. And then, then you have overthrow in your hand and you're like, okay, well, what alliance do you want to chase? Because based upon that, now you change the game plan of other people, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's also that's... so strong that it also has Emperor and Benny Israel access in it, like, like, um, like as its thing. So you can also get a card that even builds on the synergy itself because it already has those icons as well, which yeah. is like, it's so good. It feels so good to do that. That's a really good point. Because mm -hmm. if, if you are going to end up playing this card, you would like to have one or two things that combo with the Bene Gesserit tag, maybe. Like maybe yeah, just yeah. a prepare the way, which is very... Well, that doesn't really matter that much, but I guess things like Tread in Darkness or I guess Southern Elders, there aren't that many uh, yeah, Bene yeah. Gesserit I was combo gonna, cards. I, was gonna I, I think more Emperor. I think like Emperor cards. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, also... Um, I actually general, had like, a game. Oh, sorry. You, you yeah, go. Go, go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, like I just had, I had a game where I like... I went price and no object to espionage and I was sitting on like six Solari and I was like, what's on the row? And it was Southern Elders. So then I just go, you know, I go espionage, Southern Elders to Desert Tactics, and now I'm like winning the combat, right? And wow. I get a trash off. Oh. So like I think I, like that synergy for me was so like powerful. That's like crazy. that Southern Elders synergy there is very good there. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, the, it's a very flexible card. It lets you do a lot of busted stuff. That's a very good example. Yeah, that's awesome. Pick it up, then yeah. then head into uh, yeah, get extra troops, three troops, right? Plus the two you could normally send in. Yeah, that's powerful. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how about calculus? Calculus of power, interesting three cost emperor card that has blue access and spy access. It trashes a card on play, and then it reveals for two persuasion and has the text trash another emperor card you have in play in order to get three daggers. Uh. What do you guys think of this one? No, the reveal is like you it's iffy for me the reveal it's like um uh i can uh, it's so hard for me to, to, to decide when to trash if that makes sense mm -hmm. like with, with with certain cards i mean with, with certain cards like if i'm buying uh starter cost order which is just like when trash you get an intrigue of course i'm going to trash that but with some some emperor cards it's like there's merit to me trashing or not trashing it on reveal. So for the most part, for me personally, when I have um, calculus, I'm playing it for most yeah. of the rounds. Yeah. Like it's. Um, no, I, I think I, agree. I think the only main like are, like you're only trashing an emperor card for those three swords if you like if you have to win the combat. Like in no other scenario, or like are you like basically willing to trash unless it's sort of our soldier, right? Like. Like, yeah, I know some people yeah. who, like, Spy trash, network. like, public spectacle or, like, oh, you yeah, know, exactly. a treacherous maneuver uh, from from calculus power. But it was, like, round seven or round eight. But, like, they got three swords off of it. And, you know, that pushed them up for, like, combat. And they won the combat off of it. It's very, I, like, it's very yeah, situational. Like, it's, you're not, you're not usually just using calculus to, you know, instantly trash, right? Uh, instantly trash on reveal for the reveal effect. You're mainly playing calculus to, you know, go to a spy space. Assuming that you you know have like a spy on one of the faction spaces, and then you get a trash off. That's your early game like ability for calculus. Late game, you know the reveal could be useful if you have like an emperor card. You know pushes you for combat. That's it. Um, yeah. Like that's my thoughts on it at least. Do you even bother like hunting for an emperor card with this, or do you just play it for value? No, you definitely should hunt for an emperor card, right? Like if you if you at least you should hunt for an emperor card when you have this in your rotation. So. Like, if you, so, the, like, the way I'm talking about it, I'm saying, like, so you've just played this card, right? And now you've played this card, and you've bought another Emperor card. So now this card and that other Emperor card are in your discard together. Right. So now you can rotate them together 
on your next hand. Like, if you can find a way to, you know, manage that Emperor card and this one together, I think, I mean, it's, like, very good, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. um, so cool I think you should definitely that. hunt for an Emperor card. Yeah. Like, that's my answer. Yeah, the, the cool thing about it is you obviously get the effect on whatever card you trash first because of the way that cards resolve. You can choose the orders of taking their effects. So, like, you can take a Treacherous Maneuver, get the, in, the Intrigue card and the Persuasion, um, then trash it out of your hand that that, that is or out of uh, out of play that is such a weird thing to do though because usually treacherous maneuver that kind of card and as you mentioned most of these cards the emperor cards want to be played um though yeah. no actually they want to be revealed they want to be revealed you don't want yeah, like, to lose revealed, them out of your uh lose them out of your deck like yeah and treacherous maneuver kind of wants to be played but it's one of the most difficult cards to get to play like trash this card yeah. and an emperor card from your hand to gain two influence like that is not that, that's like magical christmas land most of the time like if that ha can happen um i don't see it being played for that i see it mostly used to just draw an intrigue like mm. passively or play um, it as a diplomacy yeah or play it as a diplomacy yeah. it's just a diplomacy that sometimes passively gives you an intrigue and may one or may give you two persuasion or two influence excuse me uh during the game but probably won't mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah but for me like calculus i just think of calculus just an all-around great card like it's got blue access which is nice um, but the spy access, if you have like BGO going or you're just, you know, buying some spy cards, this card is incredibly flexible. Um, and I think that the trashing cards out of play helps you find those other emperor cards that you might be hunting for or trying to, to get into the same hand. So it does kind of like work. It's it does its own work kind of, um, mm -hmm. which yeah. is nice. I agree. Yeah. I think I mean, for me, one of like the one of the good emperor cards i think we like haven't highlighted or i mean it's a spacing good card too is undercover assets right yeah. i mean the fact that you um what's it called you can ignore any argument any any like influence requirements um very good but like the, those two tags it can work with the spacing good like discard synergy or it can work with like the emperor reveal synergy right you can get those two swords or you can get a spy but you can also you know trash it with calculus power maybe trash it with tre treacherous maneuver um for mm -hmm. Uh, like another another like bump or like another three swords for calculus. I think that one um, it definitely stands out as an emperor card or like emperor like space mode card. Yeah, and that one that one actually works with a lot of synergies because it gives you that that spy on reveal. So works with all those cards that require you to recall like uh, rebel supplier as aforementioned or like even the leadership because it gives you two two daggers so it's going to give you three daggers with the leadership i don't know if i've ever i think i've seen that once or twice like but generally speaking like it's just a good all-around card um and that ignoring influence requirements gets you uh ahead of the queue right i mean this card is good it's just it's just good <laughs> right yeah, i pick this yeah, card up agree. in general <laughs> just for its effect more than so for a synergy but if i end up in a synergy of emperor or spacing guild i'm not sad right so yeah. that's a nice thing about it yeah good points good points um yeah we covered a lot you know what i, I forgot to mention we didn't talk about uh chani actually in oh, the Fremen shit, deck. Yeah. how do we forget oh, about yeah. chani um so oh. let's do that real quickly it's kind of backtracking a little bit but then we'll jump to maybe the last uh, word and then move on but um yeah, chani yeah. clever tactician is five costs of fremen and uh, it has fremen access blue and ye and yellow and its agent is if you have three or more units in the conflict get an intrigue card very very good and its reveal is retreat two of your troops to get four daggers so basically your troops come back but you stay at the same strength which is very nice and is fremen yeah. bond to persuasion what do you guys think of this one for a uh, tribal deck? Uh, I think Very it's like good. both. Right. Yeah, it's so good. But also for me, what happens actually a lot of times when I get Chani is, uh, of course, I'll reveal her and I'll retreat. But I, I'll, so many times for some reason, I don't get the persuasion off the uh, the oh, yeah. persuasion. I, 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 it's such like a it's a, it's like it's I know it's a good card. I, I never will regret buying it. But it's just like, like damn, like it's like should I have played it instead? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's you're mainly playing it if you have like the if you have two troops already or like one troop in, and then you go like frem kid and now you deploy two and then get another entry yeah i think that's like its yeah. main use right or desert mm -hmm. tactics right yeah but like mm -hmm. it's because it, it's because it has the fremen access that you're playing it right and mostly you're playing yeah. 20 to a fremen space or i guess to like a worm space you know because then it's the yeah, her yeah. ability reads units so worms yeah. are also considered units so i mean those are the only like usable shawnee things but like 
I think you should also be searching for Fremen, right? I mean, if you're yeah, playing Chani, because yeah. the, like, the Fremen bond to reveal, very good. And the reveal effect, like, strong on its own, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think um, that is she like a is good. she like a early reveal card? Probably not, but probably not. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, definitely I would probably you should pick like, her up if you see her. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'd early reveal for her, but I would never. I'd never be sad not having like you know, if mm-hmm. I got Chani, I'd never be sad with her. Like she's always useful. Any card with access in this game, I think, is like at a premium because of how few uh, cards actually feel like they have. Um, access like there's a lot yeah. of two ofs cards that don't have access right there's two unswerving loyalty two desert survival um you know there's like two double agent which is fine there's smugglers harvester which are two ofs you know there's a lot of these like derpy cards that are fine but don't give you access but having like a five coster that gives you access to a particular thing just feels so much better as you said earlier frees up your diplomacy to go somewhere else so that's a really really important thing um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really see her as like the, like, you definitely want to pick up Fremen, but I'm, I don't know if I like go out of my way. Maybe this is a problem with me and, and building like Fremen, but I, for her, I just, I'll just use her on her, her play effect. Cause like, I, I value intrigues almost more than I value those, like getting those troops mm-hmm. out of the combat. Um, unless I like, you know, have no other way to generate troops, like generally like look for ways to generate troops as well so yeah maybe that's maybe that's just a play pattern thing for me like any card that generates troops i, I generally like um that fidekin uh still tent love that card love 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 that card it, you know reveals oh. for water and gives you um a, a troop when you go to a maker space Jeez, man i mean that card is incredibly powerful when you throw in like two worms and an extra you know two worms two troops and an extra troop that's that's powerful mm-hmm. Um, for, so, for for me, it's so hard to buy cards that don't have persuasion. Uh, it's like I think yeah. that might be your problem there. Yeah, I, 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 it literally is, and I like I I like I'm I'm trying to like get past that, but it's like it right. It, it's it feels like so hard for me to like know that like I'm giving up a potential point somewhere along the way. Like, well, like, you just like, think about like make sure you play those cards. Like I think those cards are generally going to be yeah. played. Or if you like have absolutely no way to to buy spice must flow that round, then reveal it. Or if like you you get to a situation where you you might potentially draw it, and uh, don't draw, <laughs> like and you don't yeah. want to you know then you have to just go like I have to go next round because it's not it's not in my hand it's like one of two cards in my deck and if I draw it, I'm not going to get my spice must flow just don't take that risk you know like yeah. or you know if you're in a tournament and you have a fifty fifty shot maybe take the risk you know or something like that but yeah. I I don't know like I feel like. I, I agree. I used to be like that too, but I think that those cards playing this are like Beast Spoils, like Fidekin, Still Tense, mm-hmm. um, even like even Undercover Asset. Undercover Asset doesn't have any persuasion either. I mean, I w- probably wouldn't mm-hmm. buy too many of these cards, especially like Rebel Supplier doesn't either. Like that can hurt you in the long run, but you have to have a backup plan, right? You have to have like, I'm going yeah. combat, so I will augment my lack of getting Spice Must Flow by just winning more combats. Like if you're leaning into that, then... You're hoping the table doesn't correct and and go after you, right? As Cheese will say, like hopefully yeah. there's you're just the wolf, <laughs> like or there's yeah. only one other and not two other, something like I that. Think, so I think I think when you bring up like beast spoils, I think the value of beast spoils has dropped since uprising came out. Like originally it was just like oh you know combat is such the meta. Now you just go beast spoils and you know just win the game or like not win the game but like you know those three swords are nice. But I think I think like now. People aren't picking up beast bows like as much. Like people are still picking it up, but like it's not like the frequency is like dropped. I think simply because like one, it has no persuasion, right? And usually when people win yeah. games, like winning games requires you like to get a spice slow, right? Unless combat, you know, you're just going beast bows, start of card coordination, leadership, and you know, like well, you just go like straight up um, yeah. into combat, right? That's like that's that's good for like a beast bow strategy, but like mo- mainly like. If it's not generating you like resources, I don't think you would pick it up as much. That like that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think it it works great. Like say say you see in the in the row a beast spoils and a calculus of power in the same turn, then it looks pretty good because if you can cycle oh, yeah. back into them and win the next combat, like almost guarantee to win the next combat with six extra daggers. Yeah, that's looking good. But I mean, again, if this is like board awareness versus like you know, best case scenario. Like I'd say that Beast Spoils does have synergy with with uh, Calculus of Power and getting those combos to work. But at the same time, I, it probably only works early on. 
Like it probably only is going to get you those wins like first couple of rounds. Um, and then it'll get mixed up with other cards and you probably like you'll, you'll, or you'll trash it with calculus and then you won't have it anymore. And so then you have to look for another emperor card. So, I mean, like those things can be a little bit tricky too. Maybe that's the only emperor card that shows up besides calculus. And then you're just, you know, calculus is just an okay, uh, two persuasion card that trashes cards, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the two persuasion, like, I mean, I'll, I'm so biased. Holy sh- yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, I like. I think. I think. Cap, like uh, beast rolls. Like, I think with you know more experienced players, it's like it's definitely like people can keep track of where your beast spoils is. So like when yeah. people know when you have your beast spoils, they'll just they'll obviously just like commit more, right? Because they're like, oh, you know, we know you have at least three swords, right? So when they yeah. can track that you have at least those three swords, it's like, well, I'm not getting any rewards for this anyway. So now I've just wasted a card that has three swords on it, no persuasion, and I'm not getting anything off of it, right? Unless you have the rainbow, I guess. If you have the rainbow of combats, then, you know, you can play it and get, like, the effects off. But, like, yeah, that's a really when, good it's, when it's when that card is trackable, it feels so weak. It does, yeah, it does. So people will just either let you have the combat or they will they won't let you at all. Like, yeah. you win the combat, yeah. you, you don't want to, you don't want to win the combat by, like, ten daggers. Like, you don't want to be that far ahead of everybody, really you kind of want people to go in and fight for it and then beat them. Like you kind of want them to commit, but if people yeah. are just going to limp in and then let you take it for 10 daggers and everyone else is like at two and three, it, that's, that's not good. Um, or the yeah. more, more likelihood is people will know it's there uh, and, and just highline you <laughs> like, and then you yeah. will be in trouble. Like, so, I mean, it, that's why I say it, like it works best early on. Like, I think it's a better early on combo if you can get that to, um align correctly in your deck but otherwise i'd say like you know it's not a bad card i'd still pick up B- beast spoils every once in a while especially if i'm like leaning into even even a fremen deck if i was leaning into a fremen deck mm-hmm. i picked up long live the fighters or even chani like um you know a reveal of chani beast spoils like that's that's pretty good keeps your troops yeah, alive yeah i mean that's that's a powerful reveal but um obviously not going to get the fremen bond with chani doing that but you know whatever yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it, it comes to a point where like a lot of times like you feel like there is a correct play based off of just like 100 games played like you know like one play to buy a certain card will get you a higher chance of winning but then like there's the other like like party that's like do I try and like build this combo that might mm-hmm. be less efficient or like less like probable but might work to synergize with my deck better and it's like for me it's so hard to like break that gap or like 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 overcome that like that like boundary of like taking that leap of faith to like buy that card and say like oh i can maybe play around this Mm -hmm. does that make sense like where i think it's like the people that like win the games a lot like they're like almost like not afraid in some in some situations to go for and like and it's like well because the upside is so massive like if you if you can get them to us to to work together you get those cards in your hand at the same time uh you know then you have a huge advantage over people who are just playing like regular old non-synergistic cards like mm-hmm. that that's i think the the thing to do is like just just pick something i think maybe yeah. my best advice for players who are, are getting into uprising and want to try getting into some strategy uh like deck building is pick one of these core cards we've been talking about you know in fremen maybe like a maker keeper or um you know an unswerving loyalty or uh a, a mala pistol like start yeah. there get get a couple of them obviously don't just blindly go for like a, even unswerving loyalty i think is fine to just buy but like don't don't blindly pick up um a card that requires synergy um for it to be good like i think picking mm-hmm. up like a tread in darkness as uh, hoping that you know you're going to get your bene Gesserit cards your your prepare the ways to align with it that's not really worth it like again like as mentioned getting a two a two cost card playing a two persuasion excuse me card to hopefully draw into something better is usually not what you should be doing you should be playing those one persuasion cards to draw into two persuasion cards like that's that's ideal like to shape your hand to buy spice must flow um but it's just so awkward when they're on two persuasion cards right you just don't want to play them so um yeah. yeah but you know pick up those those southern elders like that's a great core card for Benny Gesserit and Fremen Bond like you know pick mm-hmm. up I even love I think I like singing the praises of Still Tent like I think Still Tent is excellent it's a Fremen card it gets yeah. you gets you troops it gets you water water's hard to come by like 
it is a little bit restrictive in that it's yellow, but you just trash your dagger, or not daggers, your dune out of your, out of your deck and you're good. Um, or even that Northern Watermaster. Anything that gives you passive bumps on reveal mm -hmm. or passive, um, or, or just effects on, on play, like that give you resources, those are very good, especially early on. Yeah. Um, okay. And lean into those, you know? Like, I, I think know. one of the questions that I want to like ask is like, say you're sitting on like seven persuasion, right? It's like this like question about like taking risk, right? Sitting on some persuasion, you see interstellar trade, or you see like ecological testing station, northern water master, and unswerving loyalty. Like, are you picking up, like, are you picking up just interstellar trade, or are you picking up like that mm. bond? Because the ecological testing station bond, I think the Fremen bond is good itself, right? You know, as the yeah. water on real, but you know, northern water master too, the Fremen bond reveal, and the fact that it plays for water, like, are y'all are y'all more likely to pick up like a bond synergy or just like a you know straight up just like one co one card interstellar trade call it a day that's that's a tough one so for me i would always pick up an interstellar trade over a combo just really? because okay. it's it's a very flexible card i think interstellar trade like one of the best cards in the game just lets you get bumps when you don't need, when you can't get bumps by going to tracks like it's basically a diplomacy but it goes elsewhere so it's slightly better in a lot of ways because most of the board spaces like that get you solari um, and spice and worms and those things you don't usually get the chance to go to get bumps so it's flexible in how it lets you kind of fix your your influence problems um i love interstellar trade i usually don't get it because someone else beats me to it but i would pick that one up over a combo unless like i mean if i had seven persuasion i would if i just didn't I wouldn't go for it. I don't think I would go for interstellar, tra yeah. interstellar trade. I think I'd try to settle on like, you know, a Northern Watermaster, um, ecological testing station. Like I'd go for a six. I, I think I'd go for a combo two cards or maybe even a combo, like a, a, a five cost combo, you know, like um, a mm -hmm. maker keeper, water, water master, and just start trying to find some more Fremen. Cause even having those two in your, in your deck means you're probably going to get two spice probably you're gonna get a ton of water i mean maker keeper gets you what you need um if you get those those that that influence eventually you will most likely um mm -hmm. or even the ecological testing station is is a great one because it gets you the extra influence for fremen and then the maker keeper will get you the spice so I, I might do that but i don't know if i'd go out of my way to try to hit interstellar trade especially if i had a good chance of of whiffing um and then someone else like picks up the other cards form you know instead so I might be a little bit wary about doing that. Yeah, uh, for but, me, it's it's yeah. so hard to like to like to like. Oh, and I think for a lot of people, like it's so hard to to visualize like the gain you can get from buying like three cards versus one. Yeah, and also just the increasing like if for like if for a beginner getting into the game to buy three cards, the amount of deck management that you have to do to keep it in play, it's hard. Oh, but like true. if you're good at it, and you can do it, and you can also like. It's so hard. I, I'm stressed again to to, like, to see the perceived benefits of buying three cards versus one because you're buying the cards that have supposed synergy together. So it's like, yeah, uh, like if, if you view them all individually at their face value, of course they're going to be weaker than, than than the seven coster. But like, there's the other side that's like, if you know what you're doing and you can do it well, you know, and, and you can deny others from getting those cards, right? Because a key thing is that. It's not easy to get seven persuasion in a, in a round, so mm -hmm. you might be able to deny somebody else from getting water, water master. Which I mean, hell yeah! Like I, I don't want someone else to get that that strong of a card, in my opinion, for yeah. that cheap. For that so cheap, yeah. It's, it's the one thing. The one the good thing about Fremen I would say is that it, it gives you the ability to like go to desert tactics and trash and you know keep your deck manageable, but like. Yeah, you know, like the deck can if you once your deck starts to get to like 13, 14 cards, 15 cards, like it's like you're grasping it's at like usually bad. Yeah. Yeah, like a, a nothing almost it's tough. I'd say I'd say like 12 is where I start to go, well, I got to cut some things. Yeah, like, yeah. Like you really want to yeah. be able to keep your hand your next hand visible. Like you want to know what's coming up. Like if you have 10 cards mm -hmm. in your deck, I'd say like that's perfect. Sometimes people like having 9 so they can draw their whole deck, but I think like having 10 is perfect cuz you can like kind of cycle between it, those yeah, two yeah, hands yeah, and know yeah. what's coming um but then again i mean it's not easy to do that it's not easy to keep your deck at 10 cards and have mm -hmm. strong synergies and make that work without um taking a bit of risks as you said like taking a bit of a of a, of a gamble like i feel like 
good yeah. about going into a Fremen uh, tribal if I pick up a Mala pistol, for instance, because it replaces yeah. itself. Um, like, yeah. And keeping in mind that Fremen bond, you only have to have the card in, in play or in reveal. So it can be yeah. the card, you know, the, the, the Mala pistol will trigger the Fremen bond. So if I have like Shashakli and a Mala pistol, I feel pretty good, you know, that I can get the Shashakli mm -hmm. trigger. Um, uh, I'm actually intrigued to think, uh, did you prefer Mala Pistol or Desert Survival like in an early game situation? Mala Pistol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I like I'd Mala say, Pistol. I'd say Desert Survival. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. Really? I, I know Dino would say Dino to Desert Survival. That's what I'm intrigued to see. You like, I don't think, I don't, like... Interesting. I, I believe, like, I think, you know, what you said is just like, you know, you're sitting on like 12 cards. Like, if you buy like a couple of cards and now you have like a Desert Survival, now you can like play the Desert Survival to trash. I think the trashing ability, you know, because like technically, if you if you trash a card, you're like your future. You're drawing one more card, which is kind of like what a Mala pistol is doing, which it just draws you a card in the moment. But I think yeah. trashing is much stronger in uprising because now you're sitting at like a ten card deck, right? So if you have like another strong card in your deck, I think waiting to draw it with Mala pistol is so much harder than just like oh, if you cut enough cards with you know Desert Survival, you just see yeah. it practically every round. It's like guaranteed. Right. So I, I mean, think, I, I like think... Desert Survival too. I, I like both those cards, no, but yeah, I, yeah. I prefer cards that draw me cards now versus cards that yeah. will draw me cards later. And that that's that's just a preference thing. Like I think getting, yeah. getting a lot of trash is totally fine, and getting not trash, but getting cards that trash are good. And uh, I think Desert Survival is a very good card. I think trashing cards is good. Yeah. I don't know if I'd have two of them in my deck, but I would definitely buy two Mala pistols if I saw one. If I like yeah. Yeah. cards that okay. that draw into new cards that that help me find my combos in turns I really need them. I find more value in those. Um, but that's just me. I mean, like, you know, I, I see the value in Desert Survival as well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think if I remember, like, I know Cheeseable like, likes Mala Pistol a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think just like the... Well, it's also the blue space, too. like, because, yeah, because you yeah. can go to Arakeen with it and draw two cards, and that's very good. Um, or you can mm -hmm. get, you, you can use it to go get some, some Solari, or, um, like, it... It's that card, like, the the real reason I think I, I like it a little bit better is because if I accidentally open hand draw, like, my, my five and has, like, say, Dune, Dagger, Convincing, uh, like, uh, Diplomacy, and then Desert Survival versus that same thing and Mala Pistol, I would be so much happier to have the blue yeah. symbol. That's you know fair, what I mean? that's fair. And, and, and I think, like, obviously you're going to be trashing Dune out of your deck, but I've been to situations where... I've like got all these yellow access cards and no blue and I just can't get my my hooks. And so like Mala Pistol mm -hmm. for me just fits that kind of like play style, like where I, I tend to trash um dunes and and daggers, but um so it but it also like gives me more flexibility for those blue blue spaces, which we don't we only have two in the deck, right? Mm -hmm. Um so I, I generally like having a couple extra blues in my in my deck than than yellows but that's, that's just me yeah. uh, i'm intrigued cj um do, do you do you tend to hit um frem kit or de desert tactics more in the game oh i like frem kit better yeah. i mean i i've i hate being forced to play in <laughs> into a desert desert tactics like um, oh yeah <laughs> i really don't like, like that space yeah i mean i will yeah. do it I, I i think it's fine i just hate being in the situation where i have no water going into round two like really mm. don't like that um I like trashing cards out of my deck. So if I get like a, you know, if I'm Paul, I think it's okay because yeah. I'll be drawing cards faster. And if I'm Fade, I hate it because I could just trash cards with Fade. And I don't think that that's yeah, really, okay. I don't think I need to double trash. Like, you know what I mean? I'd rather draw cards with Fade and trash with his ring versus the, it's like the opposite, right? Because Paul can do the mm -hmm. opposite. He'll draw. So I don't mind, I don't mind trashing as Paul or sorry, Muad'Dib. But um mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that that's that's my thought on it. I'd rather have that kind of like balance. I think the double yeah. trash is like strong. Like it doesn't matter what you trash, right? At the end of the day, even if you're picking up like you know like decent bad cards, you're it's trashing, right? right? So it's like you're still ending up at a ten card deck. So double trash with fade, I think, is like, I mean, I oh would yeah, say no, it's no, no, it's good, it's good. I, I I agree. I just don't like not having water. And if I was gonna not have water, I'd rather have like, um. Like, I, don't, I guess I really maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of this a little wrong. Maybe I'm thinking that I should be having more water with Paul, not less water. So maybe I should hate having no water with Paul. I don't like I don't really like desert tactics as a space in general, but sometimes you have to go there to block people, and that's uh, not something I like doing. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I would rather go from kit. Yeah, I'd rather go from kit. And also, it's like like also like under like a beginner's perspective, like like uh, just thinking about it, like like the perceived benefit of a trash 
it's like it's not immediate right it's like it's like later on you'll see the benefit so it's so hard to like go for that play over like say like worms or even like research station i feel like like it's like so appealing mm -hmm. um so i i think it's like one of the things that like i've come to appreciate more as i play the game it's like oh wow that trash like early game can be so effective to help me oh, like yeah. continue on but it's like uh, i like especially initially for me when i was playing the game like i felt like oh my god i'm giving up a worm for this i'm giving up potential to draw two cards at research station for this like mm -hmm. it's it's tough but yeah. yeah for for me i i think I, it's just getting a trash is good but the definitely the value of that space goes down over time i think like oh, round sure. one yeah. it's the most reasonable thing to do and every once in a mm -hmm. while um you know you might need to do it if you're like flush on water you might mm -hmm. need to do it just to get some combat uh strength or you have chani or something like that right mm -hmm. like you might need it um i just just don't like that space as a value mm -hmm. space and i think that maybe cheesable would probably agree that it's kind of a weak space um but um i don't know not, yeah. not that he's like the authority on that space but <laughs> I, I think that he, he did talk about it in his in his one of his recent videos he talked about how it's just kind of a weak space so um, i mean if we're talking like authority on that space i think lannister is a good one i think yeah, like, yeah. Lenny, I, I know lanny loves like that space like any any because oh, sure. i know lanny was preaching this too like the one combat what's well, i don't know what it's called actually let me search it up um but it's like uh on contract it, like it gets for winning it's a mouse combat uh if you win it you get a contract a water and a trash uh if you get second it's like water spice and trash like i think like pushing oh, yeah, for yeah. those two like th like or, like I, I agree with lenny on this like that combat i think is very strong like it doesn't matter when it shows up if you can get first or second in that combat like with the worm i mean you're setting you're setting yourself so nicely right now you get double trash you get the double water as well yeah. um right like i think the trashing part of this game i think is like so much more you know useful because the deck building is so much more stronger like mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know if like i'd rather see more cards by drawing or i would see less bad cards by trashing that's, that's like a an good point to be made, right? that's a really good point yeah. um i guess so i guess so like i would rather see less bad cards honestly um, but I don't usually get to do that. So <laughs> I, I like have to settle for, I, I like my default is buy cards that draw cards because the, mm -hmm. when I draw cards, I have more options and I go through my deck faster, which lets me find my combo mm -hmm. pieces faster. It's like trashing cards also does that as long as you eventually draw cards, which could be, um, you know, research station or some other great card, like a, uh, like a leadership, you know, or, or mm -hmm. you have you have steersmen, which uh, which could get you like a ton of values. I mean, we've hardly talked about that, but we don't really need yeah, to. It's yeah. just a good card. But or captured mentat, like if you captured mentat, um, and 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 get some some good uh, effects off of that. I mean, I like trashing cards like very well. I, I like doing that, but I also feel like if I can avoid spending water early, and that I think is is my biggest problem is I like I I will spend water early, but then I like feel that I need to go hit deliver supplies like right away <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah. otherwise so i feel why, like i'm this screwed. is also why i prefer um, this is also why i prefer desert uh survival over like null abyssal because you know you can mm. get the trash off or like the calculus power without having to you know go to desert tactics and then the water like that's sure. that's why would i you, prefer these like trashing cards what would you take desert survival or calculus of power well calculus right? okay yeah usually when i get a chance i take i mean i, I usually see them or I'll, I'll see like calculus of power and and desert survival if i can get like a mala yeah. pistol and a calculus i take that instead and there's two calculus in the deck so it's not like it's not that hard to find them um but you're right i mean those are those are good cards to to i mean to sometimes help you're build. not playing you're not playing calculus for the trash like you're playing the calculus to you know as a spy access right like it, the fact oh, that yeah, it has yeah, spy access is so it, is yeah. so strong that's why you're that's uh -huh. why like i'm breaking calculus over um what's it called desert Survival because i can always place a spy on yellow and then go there with calculus, which is exactly what Desert Smart would do. But calculus also has the ability to go to yellow, uh, to blue, and then maybe even like a faction space. Yeah. So. Yeah, agreed. agreed. All right, guys. Yeah, did you have any uh, final thoughts to to wrap up this episode of Spy Satellites? Uh, I think. I I love card combos, but I really love like opening theory and really like 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 the the psychological like like between players like like that part of the game too so mm -hmm. i i really like it like i, I want to stress how important it is to like interact and play and even talk 
with your opponents while you're playing. I think that's like a table talk. Yeah, I, I I'm a strong opponent of table talk. So I like I think it's like it's like when when you're building these combos, it becomes even stronger when you can get a feel for what for what what your opponents are doing. Is what I think what I'm trying to say with this. Yeah, especially for beginners, it's like it's like knowing that like if I'm gonna go for a combo that that goes for like a a combat route or for like a spice and soul route to understand that oh my are my opponents playing more combat focused or not and to gauge that which is really helpful if you can do that in the beginning of the game to set, set, set your sights for the for the win yeah yeah i 100 percent agree like one thing i mean even though we're talking about card combos as was mm -hmm. voted on by our lands red the main thing here is that while these are fun and good to do sometimes they can lead you into problems yeah. oh my god I, right <laughs> You can try to do too much. You can you can get too many Fremen. <laughs> and then yeah. you just have a bunch of like desert symbols and then nothing yeah. else. Or mm -hmm. uh, you can get a bunch of, um, uh, you know, Emperor cards and have very bad access for the rest of the game. Like there's there mm -hmm. are situations where you can get into trouble or you can get like spy cards and then have other people block you from the spy spaces you needed. There are lots of problems with going a just... Mm -hmm combo root so go into this with that kind of in mind that if you see these core cards we're talking about some of these like repeated cards calculus power bene Gesserit operative uh, maybe even desert survival or mala pistol things like that you can use those in your strategies and, and kind of like pick and choose as you go like oh maybe i'll just have a one or two card combo maybe i'll just get unswerving mm -hmm. loyalty and mala pistol and then i'll just build good stuff you know so you don't have to go heavy into one particular mm -hmm. uh tribal way or anything like that you don't have to do that and i think that that's just the best way to think about uprising it's about yeah pivoting it's about reading the board and it's about reading the other players and and obviously mm -hmm. table talking is very important in the situation of course yeah. But, yeah well thank you for listening everybody uh you have been listening to spy satellites i'm cj thank you all and we will see you on the next one take care <laughs>